Okay, amazing. So I want to come back to uh, the three I Atlas uh, object, and uh, I want to ask you. I mean, you know, look, if NASA were to green light a mission um, to send a probe to study um, the object, um, what are the measurements or data that you would need returned in order to determine whether the object is uh, natural or or potentially artificial? So on October third. Um, 3i Atlas will pass within 29 million kilometers from Mars. And uh, we have uh, several um, uh, orbiters around Mars. One of them is the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that NASA launched. And uh, it has a camera with a half a meter diameter that can resolve 3i Atlas with a 30 kilometer per pixel. And uh, that would help us a lot because currently the estimate for the maximum size of the nucleus is somewhere between 20 and 46 kilometers. Uh, the 46 kilometers was obtained based on the reflectance of uh, uh, solar uh, sunlight, uh, solar radiation um, at uh, one micrometer wavelength. And uh, such a big object would actually be almost resolved by the high-rise camera. So uh, I would like to know whether the object is of that size or maybe uh, much smaller and surrounded by a cloud of dust, in which case it would be less exotic. But if it is uh, of the order of uh, tens of kilometers in diameter, then uh, it's just uh, completely anomalous because it's a million times more massive than the previous two interstellar objects, uh, Oumuamua and Borisov. And there is not enough rocky material in interstellar space per unit volume to deliver such a giant rock to the neighborhood of Earth uh, within the last decade. So um, the, I would find it extremely anomalous if it ends up being that big. And the high rise could tell us there are also some uh, instruments that uh, the European Space Agency can use, the Chinese can use near Mars. And then on uh, uh, March uh, 16th, 2026, uh, 3i Atlas is supposed to pass uh, relatively close to within uh, 50 million uh, kilometers from uh, uh, Jupiter. And then uh, I propose to use the Juno spacecraft there uh, to come close to it. And uh, Congresswoman uh, Luna supported that in a letter to the, the administrator of NASA, the interim administrator, uh, the Secretary of Transportation, uh, Sean Duffy. And uh, she encouraged NASA to use uh, uh, all resources to probe uh, 3i Atlas, and I very much uh, am grateful for her visionary letter. Um, so my hope is that in the coming month, uh, we will learn much more as uh, 3i Atlas gets closer to the sun, it will be illuminated, it will get brighter uh, since it will reflect more sunlight. Uh, at the same time, if it's a comet, it, it will probably erupt and, and generate a lot of dust and gas that will tell us that it's a comet. But if it doesn't do so, and for example, if it maneuvers on October 29th, when it comes closest to the sun, that's the perfect timing for a maneuver the way that our space spacecraft do when it, uh, they come close to the sun, uh, then uh, I think the stock market may crash. I, I already received the text message from a, a fan that, and by the way, my essays on medium.com, uh, you can find them by looking for Avi Loeb at medium.com. I, I put one every uh, day or, or a few days. Um, uh, my essays were read by more than a million people over the past month, uh, which is quite remarkable. It's, it's, you know, there is a huge audience for this subject. And uh, uh, one of the readers uh, wrote to me a text message saying that uh, he is trading options on the volatility of the stock market with an expiration date of October uh, 29th. Uh, I also received uh, a, a, an email from a, a former pilot uh, in the USA Air Force who told me, he basically said that in the title of his um, uh, message, he said, that because of you, uh, exclamation mark, and what he meant to say is that because of me, uh, his daughter uh, is now um, interested in becoming a scientist and she keeps talking about aliens. And uh, that's to me the, the biggest compliment. If I can encourage young kids to become scientists and to uh, study the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence, you know, I, 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 I would feel very um, satisfied with what I'm doing. And then uh, finally, you know, uh, yesterday I got a message from a, a car racer 
uh, in NASCAR who says, I want to put your image and the image of 3i Atlas on the hood of my car uh, because you are now a hot commodity among the NASCAR car racers. Uh, I, you know, I've never watched uh, <laughs> NASCAR, but well, uh, well I, Avi, in that in that case, you don't have to, you know, worry about, um, you know, uh, receiving or not receiving a Nobel Prize. If, you, <laughs> if your image will be at a, in a NASCAR race for your your work, um, you know, I, I I think probably no other scientist could claim uh, that that honor. So, um, you you just said something which you know, I find very interesting is that, that you would be, you know, very happy, very satisfied, um, to know that you inspired, um, uh, kids today to become scientists, um, driven, um, or motivated by the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And, and I, that leads me to something, uh, I want to talk to you about, which is that, you know, as a, as a humanities and, and social science person who, you know, doesn't understand, uh, science with the, with the fineness that a scientist does, um, I often look at you um, and scientists looking for for traits that I understand better, um, both in your work and your person. And one thing I see with you is um, you you have um, an abundance of imagination. I mean, imagination in the rigorous sense, intellectual imagination about what science should be. Um, and and I think that one of the problems with academia and and, and the sciences today um, is that um, we have the wrong kind of imagination. We have old imagination, as you said. Quantum physics is now a hundred years old, and no one should be, um, uh, or the discovery of it is. Or the and and we still don't understand it. By the way, we still don't have the correct interpretation. So nobody ordered quantum mechanics, and Einstein had an issue with that. Uh, and we just need to, to to understand that nature is more imaginative than we are. And, you know, what aliens may look like or what uh, uh, extraterrestrial technologies may look like could uh, far exceed what we see in scripts of uh, Hollywood uh, producers or, or directors. You know, it, uh, our imagination is limited by what we witnessed here on Earth. And uh, meeting an, another, uh, you know, a visitor from a, another star uh, is like a, a blind date of interstellar proportions. And my advice to young people that go on blind dates is observe the other side before you speak. Uh, don't assume that you know the other side in advance. Don't brag. You know, we, we sent out... Uh, the golden record that, uh, you know, is a, a very proud statement about the music of the 60s and the kind of things that we feel that humanity should be proud of. You know, that's really <laughs> very arrogant of us because even now I don't find the music from the 60s as very appealing. Um, and uh, uh, I would argue that we should uh, be more modest, you know, just look out and learn from what we see rather than try to tell the universe that we are at the center of it or that we are the smartest that ever existed. You know, it's very unlikely uh, when Elon Musk said that, oh, we are probably alone, that's why we should go to Mars. You know, I would argue that it's very unlikely that Elon Musk was the most accomplished space entrepreneur since the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago, that there must be a lot of uh, uh, more successful uh, space explorers uh, that existed billions of years ago simply for, uh, you know for a very simple reason that there are billions of earth sun analogs in the milky way galaxy alone and uh, uh, you know there must have been things like us um, in, in some of those and um, uh, they existed billions of years ago so just like most humans you know more than a billion uh, people lived on this earth a hundred billion people lived on this earth and just eight billion uh, are living right now you know most of them are dead the answer to Fermi's question in that case is, where is everybody? Well, there are, mo most of them are dead. Most of the people that ever lived on Earth are dead. It's quite possible that most of the civilizations that ever existed are dead uh, by now the, because they existed billions of years ago. Now, uh, when the SETI community is searching for radio signals, it's just like it says, oh, let's check who is alive right now that we can receive me messages from. But suppose you know, that there is only a small minority of those civilizations that are still alive. and uh, But nevertheless, those that existed billions of years ago sent uh, functioning uh, devices, uh, you know, uh, probes to other places, self-replicating probes maybe, 
we might find their packages, the things that they sent in the mail, rather than uh, them themselves sending us uh, or giving us a call on the, on the phone, you know that. And so that for the SETI community to just insist, let's wait for a phone call, you know, it's completely inappropriate because we should also search for packages in our mailbox. Uh, and because the civilizations that sent them may not be around anymore uh, because their star evolved, they went through some catastrophe. But if they send functioning devices or self-replicating devices, they will be around and we can find them. And it's a completely different approach. It has nothing to do with the Drake equation. Uh, just a month ago, I, I uh, suggested the new scale that is now called the Loeb scale, where we look at interstellar objects and decide, you know, if it's a natural object for sure, we call it, uh, we give it a, a rank of zero. And if it's definitely technological that may be a threat to Earth, we give it a rank of 10. Uh, and I currently I give 3i Atlas a rank of four. Um, but um, uh, my point is that, you know, we should judge by the evidence. And it, uh, this uh, scale, zero to 10, has nothing to do with the Drake equation because you can imagine the, uh, imagine a situation, a scenario where all uh, radio transmitting civilizations are dead uh, or they stop transmitting radio waves. One of the two, you will see no radio signal. The SETI community will continue to watch the sky for centuries and not find anything. But at the same time, if those civilizations that existed a long time ago or the ones that are not transmitting radio waves are sending uh, equipment, you know, uh, uh, and, and some of these uh, uh, packages are arriving uh, to our mailbox, you know, are, are near us, uh, like in the form of UAP, um, then um, we might find them. But uh, the SETI community will still not find any radio signals from the sky. So, so there is a scenario where the Drake equation has nothing to do with uh, our discovery rate of uh, physical objects that are in the vicinity of Earth. Mm -hmm.